What is going on folks? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to One Cast Fishing. Obviously I'm not out fishing and I apologize for not getting all the fishing content out recently because well things have been crazy with work and I've been trying to build a lot of inventory with jigs and that's because if you follow us you know that we make our own jigs here at One Cast Fishing. I'm actually in the shop now you can see all my skirts and all behind me but that's what today's video is going to be about. It's the process and we're going to show you how we turn a block of lead like this right here into we get this glove off here, it's hard to pick up the jig, but basically how we turn it into bass candy like this swim jig right here. This is our peanut butter and jelly color. So we're gonna walk through the process. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. So make sure you like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned. Let us know what you think of the process and uh, let's get, you know what, let's get right into it. So let's get started. The first step is to obviously pour the jig head. Now I've got the camera set up here to kind of talk about initially my setup and some of the things I'm working with. And I'll do some other shots here and there to, to kind of walk you through the process. But I took that block of lead and you can see some of the pieces here and put it into our production pot. This is a bottom pour pot so the lead comes out of here. We heat that lead up to about 700 degrees. Lead melts at 620 but we want that hotter temperature so the lead will ultimately pour into a mold. If you don't have a hot lead, you're not gonna get a full pour because the jig ultimately should come out looking like this. You can see there, it's, it's fully molded all the way around that, that hook. If the lead is not hot enough or your jig mold is not hot enough, you're not gonna get a full pour. You may have crevices, you may have holes in there and then you basically have to remelt that lead back down and re-pour again. A lot of guys, when they're getting ready, they'll heat their mold up either using a torch They'll set their mold on top of the pot and let it heat up. What I have found most effective over the years of pouring jigs is actually once that lead is hot, you pour four or five times into the mold without a hook in there. And by doing that, you'll get that mold up to the right temperature so when you do make a pour, this will come out perfect and you won't have to remelt them down and you won't have a mistake. To pour a jig, what we'll do is we'll open up our jig mold and I'll lay it here to show you guys, kind of up like this. We're working with the half ounce Archie head, which is this mold right here. We're gonna put a five aught hook in there. This is a five aught Mustad hook, slide it in there. And this, this jig will have a weed guard, so we'll put a pin in there and that pin will make sure we have a hole for the weed guard. We'll close up the jig or the mold and then we will slide this underneath the pot and we'll pour. And just like that, we're done. We'll flip it back over, we'll open it up, pull our jig out, and there you go. And we'll set this aside and we'll work on the next step in a minute. Just got done pouring a whole bunch of jigs up, and I'll show you, I got a big old bucket full of them here. And uh, when they come out of the jig mold, as I showed you earlier, they, they look like this. They've got this spur on top here, and you need to remove that before you can get ready to paint. So what I do, I take a pair of, uh, these are just shears here, and all you do is clip it along the edge here, right where that spur meets the base of the jig. I just clip it along there, it comes right off. Now you can see there's a little rough spot there. Let's see that with focus, but you can see there's a little rough spot right there. The easiest thing I found to do is take your shears, and uh, there you go, you can see, let's see this will focus, there we go. You just kind of shave that down to make it flush and make it even. And that will, uh, that will help clean up the jig and when you go to paint, it's gonna be, uh, gonna be good to go. So time to move on to our next step. Now I've moved over to our paint booth here and what you'll see behind me is I've got some, a bottle of powder coat here, powder paint. It's actually about empty, but luckily I've got another whole jar of this green pumpkin down below. Uh, you'll see I've got a, a propane torch and I'll talk about that in a second. And I've got this contraption here. This is a fluid bed. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that show you how to make it. But ultimately I made this out of PVC pipe. Um, get a top here that's you know pretty much empty on top, a lot of space. It connects to a, a smaller one that slides in the bottom. So uh, female, male. And then we've got this uh, 
the armpit of the bag here is a filter, and we've got this hose. This hose is connected to an air compressor for a fish tank. And I, got, like, I think I got the, the compressor at Walmart or a PetSmart, just a, you know, a pet fish tank air compressor. But you turn that on, it pushes air into the bottom of this fluid bed, causes this filter to move up and, and push that air through the, flu, uh, the, through the powder, causing it to move like a fluid, fluid and kind of boil up. So it makes it really easy to dip something in there because it's got all the air bubbling. And so that's ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip our jig into this fluid bed to get that nice paint job on there. And the way we do that is we'll take our jig and I've got one right here again. We're working on the half ounce archie head. We'll take our jig. Now remember, we've got this hole in here still where the weed guard goes. If you just dip this into the paint, it's gonna clog up that hole and you're gonna have to drill it out, which you can make a mistake a lot because it's not gonna be even. So the, the easiest thing I've found to do is get a Teflon pen. These are eight, eighth inch Teflon pens. I put that in that hole there, just like so. Now when you dip it in the powder paint, you're not gonna have an issue with paint getting in the hole. The great thing about this Teflon pen, it slides right out and the paint will just chip right off, just like this. It doesn't stay on there, so um, that's why I use those. So that's kind of our basic process of how we paint our jigs. Now I'm just gonna go in to demonstrate how we do it here and then we'll, then we'll move on to the next step. The way we get this powder coat to stick onto this jig is by heating it up. So what we'll do, we'll take our jig there, obviously the Teflon pen is in. We'll heat it up with this propane torch for just a few seconds. On the bottom, we'll run it to the side. We'll run it on top here. Just a few seconds here. Get it nice and warm. Then we'll dip it down on that powder paint. We'll shake off the excess. Now what I like to do, is you can see there's paint in that eye there. I'll take a toothpick. Just clean out that eye there so we don't have all that extra paint on there. So when you get these jigs, you gotta do it yourself. Then we'll remove the Teflon pen, nice and gently. And that is a green pumpkin, Argy head jig, nice and painted. The next step is to bake it. So I demonstrated to you all how to paint the jig with the fluid bed. After I did that one jig, I did about 87 more of them. And the camera is actually sitting on the oven right now. I'm gonna take these jig out, jigs out of the oven. And this is a rack I made. It's the rack that came with it, but then I modified it to put more uh, wire in there so I can hang a lot more jigs on there. There's 88 on here. After you powder coat your jig, you have to bake it in the oven. Now, it's gonna vary depending on the type of paint you're using. These were at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Actually, I did about 23 minutes to let the oven warm up. All I use is a, a pretty big size toaster oven, which is bigger than your normal size, as you can see by uh, the rack here. But it allows me to paint a whole bunch at once or, or bake a whole bunch at once. Now, the reason why you wanna bake them is that the powder coat cures extremely hard when you bake them on there. That's why when you run these through rocks, if, if you happen to drop it on concrete or something, the paint job is much more durable and it's not gonna chip off and scratch as easy. So that's why we bake all of them. It just makes that paint and that coat very strong, very durable. And now that these are cooled off, obviously they are because I can pick them up. We're gonna move into the next step, which is uh, put the weed guard on. As I mentioned, the next step in the process is putting the weed guard in inside your jigs so, so they're weedless. Now, that's why we've got that hole in there. That's why we've used, all, used the Teflon pins to make sure there are paints in there. Now what we use, we have an eighth inch diameter weed guard. This is a Boss type. We like using the Boss. They seem to be a little higher quality and they seem to stick in there a little better. Now, you can stick that in that hole right there. And that's what it's gonna look like. The problem is if you just put it in there, it's gonna fall out. I mean, these can be a little bit snug, but for the most part, Right, these will not stay in there unless you secure them in there some way. And that's what we're gonna do right now. What I have found most successful for me and our products is using this super crazy glue. Um, it's very durable, it sets up very hard, it doesn't leave a lot of residue, and it, I mean, it sets up very fast. And this is what I've used, found to be the most successful to secure the weed guards inside the, the hole there. Uh, other folks may use some other different pockets of glue, but this is what we use and we found to be very successful. And all I'll do here is I'll take a scrap piece of cardboard. This is from one of our skirts. And all I'll do is I'll pour this out on there just a little bit. Little dab there. 
make sure we uh, screw this back on so this paint doesn't dry out. We'll take our jig right here. We'll take our weed pin, we'll dip it in that glue. And then we'll just stick it in there like so, nice and snug. That should be lined up perfectly as you can see with the hook. There we go, got the angle right. Just like that, and that's gonna be our jig with the weed guard in there to make it weedless. And we'll just set that aside and we'll let it dry. So I'm gonna do a bunch of these here. And then after we these dry up, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is probably the most fun, the most creative, and that is putting your jig skirts onto your jig. So it's time for the fun part now, and that is actually putting the skirt on these jigs. I think I mentioned that endless combinations of colors you can make. Today we're working on our blue oyster color, which is our very popular color. It's a, basically a green pumpkin variation that uh, has got these blue strands on there. There's also a blue flake in that green pumpkin, but very popular color for ours. I'm gonna show you guys how we tie the jig. I'm gonna show you on this angle, I'm gonna show you another one close up um, to get a little better picture for you guys. But it's, it's a pretty simple process. The first is to let you guys know, we use wire to tie our jigs. The reason why we use wire is because it's way more durable. If you go to a lot of the big box stores and buy a jig, the jig will have a rubber collar on there. That's how they, they mass produce them. It's a lot faster to do it that way. But the problem is if you ever fish with them, either if you're skipping, you're flipping through heavy cover, over the course of the day, that collar may begin to slip down. You have to keep readjusting it. Or two, if you happen to keep your jigs over a season, that collar can start to dry rot out. So that's why this wire here, and I've already bent this over, is way more durable. It's not gonna rust out, it's not gonna break on you. And it's just that it makes a better quality product. This here, is 26 gauge wire. We found that you know it's thin enough that it doesn't it doesn't provide a lot of bulk on that uh, the, the shank of the jig, but that 26 gauge is extremely durable. And it, and you guys can see it again here. This is obviously black, but it's a copper wire that's been coated black. So uh, that's what we use to tie our jigs here. Now the process is relatively simple. We'll take our jig and I'll put it in this vise here. I like using a vise to help secure it. Uh, this is just a vise, I got it I got it, got it. Lowe's, right? Just a cheap little vise, but it, it works extremely well. We'll take our strands here, and this has three tabs of skirting material. So two of that green pumpkin, blue flake, and then this one that's got these uh, rib bars on the end here. And we'll slide that over top of the jig, we'll divide it up. So we divide it in two here. We slide it over top of the jig, and then set something on it to secure that in place. I like using the magnet, because it really sticks on there, it doesn't secure. It's this little trick uh, that I've learned over the years, the magnet really holds the skirt on here. As I already sold you, showed you, I already bent this uh, wire over. So at this point, we'll slide it over the skirting material and around the jig. We'll wrap it around twice and have it sticking out on one side. We'll take our pair of pliers, we'll pull it tight we then twist it up. We twist and tighten, uh, we twist, oh man. We twist it here. We get these on here. And as I'm twisting it, and apologize for not looking up, but obviously you gotta watch this. I'll pull it out, tighten it up, continue to twist it till it's nice and snug on there to where that, this jig collar, or now this wire tie collar, is not gonna move around. At that point, we'll take our pair of scissors, we'll snip it off here, tuck the, the excess wire over so it ends up looking something like this. All right. And then all we have to do is snip off the ends of the tabs, just like so. And there you have it, that's our blue oyster right there. That's how you tie a jig up. And this is really the last step before we package it up and it goes out to, uh, to our customers. So I'm gonna show you guys another angle here to get a little better close up to see what we're doing because I know if I zoomed it in, you wouldn't see my face. So we're gonna do that and hopefully that will help you maybe appreciate a little more what I'm doing here as I'm tying them up. Uh, so we'll do that and we'll close out the video. Again, this is the second angle I promised, but ultimately what we do is you put our jig back in this vise we take our strands here, 
our, our skirting strands. We'll divide that in two, slide that over the top of the jig here, put our magnet down, or if you don't have a magnet, you can use something else. But again, like I said, I've learned how to use the magnet really well. Take our 26 gauge wire, pull our strands out. We wrap it over here and then we'll wrap it around once from the top, once from the bottom. So you really get three pieces of wire on top and bottom. Grab my pliers here, pull it tight, just like so. Then we'll pinch it down, twist the wires up. And once they're twisted, we'll pull out on that little tag in, tighten it up a little bit more. We'll keep doing that to twist it up. And once we've got it nice and snug there, so it doesn't move, take our pair of scissors, cut off that tag in. And again, that's, that's how we tire a jig. And you can see, you can see it there. That's what it looks like. We'll just snip off the, the tabs there, the ends of the tabs that connect them. And um, there's our blue oyster right there. Well, folks, I definitely appreciate you watching. This is our process of how we make our jigs. There's nothing secret here. There's a lot of other videos and that you can watch and read to be able to do this for yourself if you wanted to take the time to make the investment to do it. Again, that's kind of how we started is I made them for myself because I figured I'd, you know, over the course of a lifetime, I'd make my money back, but then they worked really well and the business kind of grew from there. So if you are interested in some of our jigs, you can check us out at onecastfishing.com. We've got standard products up there, but we also have the option where you can design your own. So you choose the jig color you want. We have a bunch of skirt colors up here. You can choose those, mix, mix and match those colors. You can pick three tabs and we'll come out here and tie them up for you and send them to you. So that's an option too. But if not, just make sure you like and subscribe. And again, like hopefully you enjoyed the video and I'll be out fishing again hopefully soon and be able to see that content. So uh, again, thanks for watching. And remember, Alonco's one cast away.